tonight. Stream any movie on your PC to your replay TV in the living room. How cool is that? Plus, join our LAN party. We're playing Battlefield Vietnam. And Leo's going to find it a little hard to stay awake with a bunch of crazy gadgets designed to promote snoozing. Live from the Tech TV studios in San Francisco, it's the Screen Savers. <laughs> And welcome to the Screen Savers. I'm Patrick Gordon. And I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the show where uh, we keep you in close touch with the coolest stuff happening every day in technology. Set your recorder. Tonight we have a great show. Oh, yeah. Our good friend Dick DiBartolo is here in studio with some sleeping gadgets and a special surprise. It's a very sleepy, sleepy segment. Look, Sarah Lane. I just, I just, I think she's... Uh, what are you doing? Is, it, is that a combat <laughs> outfit you're wearing there? It, for the land of. party? It, does it look like a combat outfit? Except for the boots. Do you want to see the boots? Yeah. Well, you see, you'll see them later. I can walk on you again if you would like. Those boots? I'm totally cool with that. Not in those boots. <laughs> <laughs> I should show you. It's one thing see, to walk on me with your people. They've got some heels. <laughs> oh, 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 you like a little buck. Okay. Those boots really are made for They walking. really are going to walk all over She's you. We kind of did that joke to death yesterday, didn't we? Anyway, today I'm hacking the Windows kernel. All right. I'm the big time now. Going with the military theme. And yeah, I'm going to yeah. do I'm going to do it gorilla style. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hacking the kernel gorilla style. That's our Sarah Lane. You know what else it is today? Thursday. Yeah. For the Screen Savers Land Party. Firebind Radio. Mr. Bentano. Yes, today is a very exciting day. It's on par with getting married or even having a baby. What? <laughs> Gentlemen, we're playing the brand new, only nine day old Battlefield Vietnam. Aww. Whether you're playing as the NVA, of course, or the US, you've got a whole cadre of weapons to attack your enemy. It's, it's, the jury's still out. We're not sure if we're in love with it. It's a lot of fun. We'll check in with these guys a bit later. To celebrate Dan's absence today Where from the he? show, we Where have Kevin he? wishes he was Foo Rose right here on the end. <laughs> Next down the line, Foo all you. the way from the infamous Seinfeld television show, Kramer yeah, from Medford, Oregon is here. Hey. And next to him, of course, Yoshi, our favorite modder, our only modder, that he would still be our favorite even if we had more than one. <laughs> we think. He's also playing. I'll be playing down here as well. Plus, Back to you guys. Plus the other modder were like really, really good. And then, yeah, and then Yoshi would be the he'd, not he'd be the favorite. second favorite second modder. Second favorite, yeah, right. Yeah. Let's this is a cold, cold, That's cold. Set today. I'm just teasing, just teasing. Let's take a look at the tech news that caught our eye today, is Sarah. That, I just have to ask: Is your name really Kramer? Yeah. That's a great name. Is that Spelt a good the same name? Name and everything. I love it. But I you know have what, a cat Kramer... named Cosmo. You guys should get together. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I also used to live in Ashland. Really? So I know your neck of the woods. Oh yeah, Oregon for life. All right. It's a bit of a slow news day today, but we've got a little bit. The Game Developers Conference is underway in San Jose, and today Microsoft introduced a new cross-platform gaming platform they called XNA. Yay. XNA builds on DirectX 9, but will deliver high-quality graphics and pave the way for high-def gaming. That is not what it looks like. XNA will appear first in Xbox. Duh. Yes, it brings the blue screen of death back to the... Woo! TV where it belongs. Or it just makes it so easy to develop for both the PC and the Xbox. Why would you develop for any see, other gaming platform? See, that's smart. Yeah. That's a smart move. You've got to respect that. As long as it works. Well, it's based on DirectX 9. From what, I, what, I, what, what Microsoft's saying, it, it's kind of DirectX 9 with better support for full motion video, high def potentially, which is kind of interesting. At some point, Microsoft was going to have to up the standards so that you could do high definition gaming. Microsoft, but with, with their gaming initiatives, they've either like, you know, home runs. Yeah, you never know. Or strikeouts. You? And, and you never know where it's It's hard for end. them, though, at this stage in their career. Right. To lose, Worth an right? 83% market <laughs> penetration on the kinda desktop hard. and a lot of Xboxes yeah, out there. Kind of hard to lose. I think, I, you know, we'll see. X and A, that's the big push. That's, right. that's going forward. Uh, is that it? That's it, that's man. I said it was a slow news day. It's a slow that's news day. That's the only thing that right. happened today. We'll more news later on. <laughs> more? Yeah, there's a big story. We'll talk about it later on. Wayne joins us on the Tech TV Net Cam Network from Akron, Ohio. Hello, Wayne. Hey, good evening. Are you following me? <laughs> Only, only uh, over the air. Yeah. I, can't, I can't chase you down in person. I, just, I did a radio show uh, in San Francisco a couple of days ago. Wayne was on it. Huh. 
What else were you? You've been on everything I've done in the last couple of months. Oh, yeah. We were on your taped radio show. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were on my other show, too. So what can we do for you today, Wayne? Well, I am putting the finishing touches on a website that will be posted very soon. Cool. And what I'm looking at is uh, the my web host will be tracking for me through logs the IP addresses of visitors to my site. That's, yeah, as a matter of course, that's what a web right. browser, what a web server does. Absolutely. Yeah. And what, um, in my case, I'm not going to do anything with that, so I want to put a privacy notice up, one, notifying folks that are there that they are being tracked. Good. But also letting them know that uh, I'm not doing anything with that information. Good for you. I'm wondering, number one, if there's anything else that you'd like to see in a privacy mm. notice. And then number two, since that does become a file on my um, web server, if you can think of anything that you'd like to see um, or can suggest be done to protect those particular files. That's a really good, I wish more web hosts, uh, web uh, masters thought about this kind of thing. Privacy is going to be par pa paramount in the future, mm -hmm. especially with people like you stalking me. So, I think, <laughs> <laughs> no, just teasing. So, in fact, you were here in studio with us, uh, weren't you, a couple of weeks ago? I missed you. But I know that I know you came out here, didn't you? Yes, we did. Yeah. So I have a privacy statement on mine, which you're welcome to steal because I stole it from somebody else. Uh, <laughs> and it, basically, what I would suggest is absolutely indicate what kinds of information you collect. Now, even if it's just IP addresses, uh, I think it's good for you to explicitly say this is what we know about you. Uh, and if you do other stuff like collect addresses for a mailing list, you should say that there. Um, you might check with your web host. You probably don't set cookies, but very frequently web hosts do. Mm -hmm. In fact, that has happened on Leoville for a while. I didn't know it, and people were saying, why are you setting cookies? So I'm, I'm not setting cookies. I'm not setting cookies. Well, I see it in my cookie blocker. So you might check with your web host, see if they are using cookies in any way, and if so, you might want to expose that as well. Just being very upfront is great. And then absolutely, you should say, as I do right at the front, I promise, I pledge, not to disclose your private information to any third party. Now, I put a further disclaimer in there saying, unless necessary to comply with legal process. Right. Because the truth is, you cannot really promise never to reveal this, right, Wayne? Correct. Because if the feds come knocking, <laughs> you I'm know. I'm giving you up right away. You're caving, right? Absolutely. As you should. You, you also have a really good reminder at the end of your privacy FAQ where you remind people that public message boards are public. So anything you post there, anybody who stumbles through there can read. And that goes for blog comments, any, mm -hmm. anywhere you're posting on a website. It is a good idea. You're doing them a public service saying, hey, look, this is what I collect. This is what you might be revealing. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Keep that in mind. Privacy is important. Now, as far as the log, I mean, you could arrange with your web host to delete the logs on a regular basis. I right. would suggest that if you do that, put that in the privacy policy. Say, we do, we do not read the logs. We do not collect IP addresses or any other identifiable information about you from the logs. You, you may be looking at stats, in which case you are looking at some information. And we delete the logs every X number of days. I think that's a good thing to say. I like it. Excellent. Yeah. I, would, I, I commend you, Wayne, and I, I think more people should do that. If you're a commercial site, the next step is to go to trustee and right. get it verified, have it audited, and then you could put the trustee logo on there saying, not only do we have this privacy policy, but an independent third party has verified that we do what we say we're going to do. That's when I trust a site when I see that. It's good stuff. Very good. Thanks for calling. Well, Leo. Um, I want to thank you on behalf of my family, and I'm sure lots and lots of fans that are out there for uh, nearly six years of uh, hosting every evening and uh, being part of our extended family and our lives. Well, it's been my great pleasure. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. Move all your PCs video onto your Replay TV. Mm -hmm. This is just part of Joshua Brentano's continued plot to make me mad because I got a TiVo and he's got a Replay. Plus, it, bad. he's bad. He's bad. He's bad. You go ahead. Mad Magazine. <laughs> you do it. You do it. You do it. Train your act to the TV studio to show off his latest gadgets. All coming up with the screen savers. You say it. Kramer's beating them all. All right. Well, you know, uh, big news. Sleep Awareness Week is, uh, is, is upon us. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm aware of my. She's very aware of her sleep. But before we, uh, before you drop off to sleep, we have an array of. I'll talk quieter. Gadgets to help you have the most restful Z's possible. Dick D. Bartolo, the Giz Wiz, is here to get us ready to snooze. But before we do that, Dick, yes, sir. I couldn't help but notice that that hideous hat. <laughs> what? what <laughs> Fifteen bucks, pal. Really? Hat. Gold 
Golden Gate Railroad Museum? Yeah. Were you uh, riding a train? You know, absolutely. I was on a website. I love trains. Yeah. And I typed in San Francisco. And this museum came up. And you were coming out here anyway. I was coming out here to be with you. Aww. And then I found out that you can what? actually drive a train. Don't this take that right-hand uh, fork there. the wheel. Wow. And playing with the whistle and actually... Is that, What's that? Is that great What's that fun? do? Is that the whistle? That that, that's, the, that's, the that's the whistle, whistle? as you approach a great no, crossing. Turn right, turn right, turn uh, right! <laughs> no, 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 it's really great wow. fun. How, do you have to pay for that? Yeah, oh, it's $150 for, for, how long? for an hour, oh. and you can up to four people can drive oh, it. Oh, that's neat. So, I understand uh, you let Allison Strawn, our producer, uh, Allison and drive. Ryan drove it, and Ryan as did? soon as they get it out of uh, San Francisco Bay <laughs> and put it back on the tracks. To <laughs> how hard is it really to drive a train? Anyway, uh, I mean, it can't be that hard. It's not too hard. You there's know, no there's steering wheel. There's no steering wheel, but you have to know when to apply the brake and do the whistle when right. you're approaching a crossing. It was, it was oh, great fun. fun. It was oh, great that's fun. funny. Are you a train buff? I know oh. you are. I've, your backyard, Hello. he's got a train yes, set all you. over the backyard. Thank you. Are in what my am I yard? thinking? <laughs> he's got, you know, anyway. Yeah, that was my house you were I at. forgot. What was I, <laughs> okay. what was I thinking? All right. Let's take a look at the sleep gadgets okay. before we put everybody this, to sleep. This guy's really neat. This is aromatherapy stereo machine from Radio Shack. And okay. listen, one of the, let me click here. here. I have a microphone. <laughs> one of them is train wheels. Yeah, turn on the mic. Okay. So you can... Oh, you know what, that's good. So yeah. if you live in a busy, busy city apartment, as you do, uh, absolutely. this would be soothing. And what's neat about this is that this goes on the road with you, and it comes with a pillow speaker. Oh, that's kind of neat. So, so you put this under your pillow? Under your pillow. Because I wear, I try to wear headphones, and, and it, oh, it's it, annoying. It's you annoying. You roll yeah. over. So this, you put this under the pillow, and you can hear. And the, it plugs into this here, and it has a little shutoff switch. Set it for 30, 60, 90 Does minutes. Does it sound okay, though? I mean, yeah, not you know, it's thirty dollars. I tell you, the sound is not bad. I mean, it sounds like a train. What? How much? You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I know from real trains, and also. Does the bed start it, shaking? It, like, <laughs> only if you're lucky. Yeah. You've got magic fingers, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> then if you want, you can put your favorite oil or perfume on here. There's a little fan motor under oh, here. Please. And you can have aroma. This is a this is an aromatherapy? Yeah. Well, there's nothing on it. Smells it smells like now. cotton. It's not Okay. okay. It smells like a sheep. Okay. All right. Zelko, we all know Zelko. I'll check we this do? Off. We all know Zelko? Yeah, you know they invented the itty bitty book well, that I know, okay. oh, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So now they introduced at Gift Fair. This is the itty bitty book light. Smaller than ever, but now it's the LED version. Oh, I like that. Now that's a good idea because you know battery life is a big battery issue. Battery life, a hundred thousand hours for the bulbs. Oh, you could read great. War and Peace every night for about a hundred <laughs> years. Wow. Battery life is like somewhere around twenty to twenty-five oh, see, that's hours. That's Because the other ones you'd read an hour yeah. and the thing would yeah. dim. So this yeah. is really neat. Oh, that's that's good. Uh, Zelco. Itty bitty book like how much is that? LED. It's under thirty bucks. All right. I okay. wore this. You know, this is really neat. It's called Silent Night, and it's the snore stop. And we'll show it in the back here. There are two little contacts, and you wear it on your wrist, and it has a microphone in it. So when you snore, the microphone oh, hears you. Hears you. Oh. It sends a little bit of voltage through the oh, two contacts. That'll little, cure you. Oh, it's about all right. No, if, if it doesn't cure you, it'll kill you. <laughs> it's like 600 amps. No, actually, I did it. And it it's just like something it's nibbling a, at it's you. It's a it's little not, exactly. And what you do is on the front there's a uh, two buttons so that before oh. you go to sleep. You just want to be able to feel a tingle, right. and the manufacturer says that's enough that you feel a little bit you of go, noise, <sighs> and you turn and you over, over, and you stop snoring. That's about $30. <laughs> <laughs> my is, wife, that's my wife's going to turn it way up. <laughs> yeah. That's from Brookstone. All right. Oh, I, I, you know what? I have their original of this. It's just for the airplane. Right, but now they've added... Oh, I can't... Wait a minute. Can you me, hear it? Here, we got to put this... Can you hear it up there? Can you hear it? Hello, uh, number 43, anyway, your pizza's well, ready. It's going directly into your ears, but it also has babbling brook, and it has bird sounds and country sounds, and it's about $40. Can, you it, can't hear anything. Wait, it, let me, it, let me uh, put it. Because it's very... Here, turn it, it up all the it, way, yep, and then... Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear it? Go a little oh, there more you go. toward the ear. There we go. There we go. What yeah. other sounds? That's good. Oh, that's great. Running water. You'll be getting up and going to the bathroom every five yeah. minutes. <laughs> and it also comes with a cable so you can play your own, like, MP3 or your CD player through it. So, that's again, it's not for... super good stereo speakers, right. but it's, in, it's kind of in, built in. Yeah. See, I wear my headphone and my, um, and my, uh, eye, my uh, blindfold on the airplane, 
And this is great. This, and yeah, because really you have your little, your little sound system with you. I might do the rest of the show like this. <laughs> okay. Really like Finally, my own chance to be on. Okay. Actually, i got to go to the bathroom. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. While well, Leo's gone, I'd like to... Oh, okay. Uh, this is okay. $40 from Brookstone. Also, there are a lot of albums out. This is from Brookstone. The Science to this. of Sleep. Soothing night. Music. Millions of people around the world. Watch the screensavers. Right. And drift off. Right. To sleep. Well, you know, that is the other thing. <clears throat> is to find... Oh my God, we've killed the audience. <laughs> Look, they're oh, all asleep. Oh, wow. Oh, isn't that... <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Oh. Oh. It worked. You know why? You know why? If you read a deadly dull book... <laughs> Get out of here. Hey, what's your book? Plug your book. Uh, well, my book is just Mad Magazine. If you go to my website, That's the book. play What the Heck Is It? and That's win an autographed copy of Mad. Dixie Bartolo is right. Mad's maddest writer. Right. But we I did hope something. You know that this by is now. not coming out till May. Oh, well, uh, but uh, since exclusive? You, exclusive. Screen never seen exclusive. before. This will be a pull out post it in May. You know the famous dogs playing poker? This is dogs playing. Xbox. Video poker, <laughs> okay? They have their own plasma screen. I love it. Their little cheat codes, their snorsages. <laughs> so that's a, a preview <laughs> of the May issue. And uh, as I said, go to gizwizbiz.com and great. play What the Heck Is It? And win yourself an autographed copy of Mad Magazine from Mad's Maddest Writers. Gizwizbiz.com. Dick, it's always a pleasure. Hey, what a, it's great, great to, to see you. you. I'll see you back in the big All right. apple. Okay, take okay, care. Buddy, Make sure thanks. you blow the whistle next time you go across that crossing. <laughs> okay, very good. For a good. list of gadgets Dick did not mention, uh, snooze on over to the screensavers.com. <laughs> and don't forget to visit Dick's website. <laughs> <laughs> see that buffalo out there? <laughs> and get with this. Com. Better is what the heck is it? <laughs> and get a copy of a uh, Mad Magazine autographed by Dick. Still to come, watch your PC's video with your home TV on replay. And up next, we'll tell Jim about progressive scan DVD players. Do you need HDTV for them or not? The screensavers continue. Great news. You could be Tech TV's next winner of a $25,000 shopping spree or 500 daily cash prizes. Take your pick. That's right. All you have to do is watch Tech TV every night from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern. I know you're doing that already. Then look for our Tech TV Digital Digs Den Sweepstakes commercials, which contain Tech TV secret codes. Each time you see a different clue, go to techtv.com slash digital digs to enter. There are four new codes each night with four chances to enter each day. I know you're going to win. Starts today through March 28th. Doesn't start today. It's almost over, actually. It's this is the over. last yeah, week to it. enter. It didn't start today. I'm just kidding about that. This is the last week to enter. You only have a couple more days. Be sure to watch and play every day. It's fun, and you might win. Well, it really is. Today is the first day of the rest of the contest. True. Right? And the rest of our lives. And, oh, God. Jim Jaws is on the phone from North Sydney, Nova Scotia. Hey, Jim, welcome to the show. Hey, Leo. Hi, Patrick. It's How's great it to have you on. Thanks. I never miss the show, guys. You guys are doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to be buying a new DVD player. Mm -hmm. I don't have an HDTV, and all the salespeople tell me that progressive scan DVD players are meant for HDTV. So is that going to affect my picture quality on my regular television? No. Actually, it's amazing. It's basically, the progressive scan is only going to come out those component ports on the back of it. Basically, if you, don't have a, if you have a regular television, like NTSC, interlay screen, progressive isn't going to help that at all. But it doesn't hurt it. It doesn't hurt it. No, right. in fact, I watch uh, my, uh, I don't have, uh, on a regular TV, I watch a progressive scan DVD right. player. But you might be overbuying. Well, the thing is, I was about to say, two years ago, I'd say you're overbuying. Today, you Everything can get progressive all. scan on an $85, right. $125 DVD player. Now, what's nice about getting a, a higher quality DVD player is it may handle different DVDs and, and, and you know. Like MP3 play. Uh, right. Discs. And, and unpacking it. Some people can say they can see video differences. Some people say they can see some, some lack of quality at some of the lower end DVD what players. What is progressive scan? Progressive scan. Okay. You got a computer monitor. You got a TV monitor, basically it's interlaced, it writes basically first I guess the odd lines and then it comes back and it does the even lines. So only half the screen at a time. Exactly. That's why they talk about you know fields and frames. Right. On a progressive 
uh, progressive screen. Right? Like this. Any computer monitor now is yeah. a progressive screen. Uh, HETV, some HETV is interlaced, some is a progressive screen, but the idea is it basically goes from top to bottom all the way down. The idea is you get a smoother video, you get a more realistic looking video, you get a more accurate recreation no of the original flicker. film. No it's, flicker, it's, high, it's almost higher. Yeah. That's why actually, that's why I, I, I actually almost prefer to watch, uh, you know, DVDs playing back on a computer system on a progressive scan monitor because it's much crisper, Looks it's good. much sharper. Yeah. And uh, it's one nice. other thing I would add is it, when you do go out and get a good HDTV, the same progressive scan technology will in all likelihood be built into the TV. And since you're mm -hmm. spending more money on the TV than you did on the DVD player, right. probably better. So you may, you can buy a progressive right. scan DVD player, but chances are you won't even be using that progressive scan circuitry. You'll be using your TV's progressive scan circuitry instead. Oh, the irony. Oh, the irony. So, Jim, don't yeah. worry about it. It's not bad, but it's not necessary. Yeah. So Thanks for the call. They were basically steering them right. That's right. Amazing. Shocking. That's because it's Nova Scotia, where hey, they do things right. Good people in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Joshua. Yes. Slam party day, Patrick. The enthusiasm. That's right. The verb. <laughs> That's right. As, <laughs> the I pointed, as I pointed out earlier, we're playing the brand new Battlefield Vietnam. Uh, and as I mentioned before, to celebrate Dan's absence, we have Kevin, who wishes he was Foo Rose, running the server. How is the server set up on this? The server setup is actually, it's probably the best game that we've set up to date. It's so easy. Uh, the CPU loads only about uh, 40% right oh, that's now. that's cool. And we have 24 players in the game, so. That's good. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Nice and clean and easy to administer. The, the first Battlefield was easy, too, because it's, it's just a drop-down menus, right? And you just point and click. Exactly. And this one's even better. It allows you to choose exactly which vehicles you want in there. Oh, cool. And uh, it's just. Great game. What do you think of the game so far? So far, so good. I love the graphics. Definitely a lot better than Battlefield 1942. Mm -hmm. They have a little bit of a modified engine in this one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I'm liking it. Yeah, I like it too. Kramer, what yeah. do you think? Well, I think it's a lot more fluent and like uh, Kevin said, the graphics are very much improved and a lot with the graphics engine and... Um, How are you doing in the game? Uh, pretty good. Not, not too this, good. Today's your first day playing it? Yeah, v Vietnam. Cool. Well, Yoshi is, this is also his first day playing it, so if he's beating you, it's pure luck. Yeah, well, the first game, we just owned the other team. It was, it was pretty embarrassing. Yeah, we actually, just already started up another cycle. Um, I like the game. The gameplay is pretty smooth. I, I really like that North Carolina foliage. <laughs> right. Uh, supposed to be Vietnamese foliage, I guess. Uh, but it's a good game. I like the gameplay. It's real smooth, real easy to play. It has only been out a couple weeks, guys, so a lot of it, we're, we're saying, oh, we're not sure we like it, we're not sure, so it will take some more gameplay, but we are going to do it for the next week or two in the LAN party, so maybe you guys will get to come back. And I play. love it. Yeah. 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 We guys. all know the crucial deciding factor for Joshua Brentano on whether he likes a game or not. Well, if I can beat, beat all of you guys. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. If he <laughs> not loses, doing well. he hates it. That's right. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Sarah's up to some hacking tricks. Her Windows tweak is ahead. And after the break, we're going to show you how to take any video clip you have downloaded, ripped, home movies, whatever's on your PC, and watch it on a TV thanks to Replay TV when the screensavers continue. Stay here. Welcome back to the Screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte coming up in this half hour. Hack your booty. I mean, hack your boot screen with the help of Sarah. And Rick wants to, I guess just wishful thinking. Rick wants to play video on dual monitors. He'll ma we'll mastermind the uh, best video cards he should use. That's all coming up. But Now, in the past, we've talked a little bit about uh, uh, home media servers. You know, the idea of, so I think it's something people know they want to do, but really don't know how to do it or even what would be involved. It's just sharing videos, movies, and music. Uh, f f across the household, from PC to PC. But what do you do if you don't have computers in every room or you want to watch it on a TV? Uh, you, well, you buy a replay TV and you plug it into your home network. And Joshua Brentano has been telling me this. He's been beating on me for yep. years. Here to show us how to actually go the next step, stream any video file on your computer to your TV. It's our own in-house replay TV expert, yes. Joshua Brentano. I'm not a TiVo hater. No, but you're a replay lover. I'm a replay, replay lover. This oh, is yours? Oh, that's mine. A lot of the stuff you do on replay, you can do on TV, on, on TV. TiVo. Yeah, but you have to hack it. You have to hack on. it. It's a lot more involved. And this is easy. You plug it into the Ethernet jack into your router, and it's on the net. I'm just jealous because I hacked and hacked and, and hacked. And the 40 and I still ones are 140 bucks right now. 140 bucks. Yeah. So replay TV went out of business, though. They were bought by by Sonic Blue was uh, the purchase the, the, all the replay stuff from. Uh, 
Dennis, Dennis Morantz. Dennis Den- 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 Morantz. Well, the Bobby problem is, that's the thing. When you start, they get, were getting sued by all the they motion were. picture companies were saying, you can't do that. I don't know how, but DNM has kept it up. Replay still around? Yep. The, uh, you still could still going. subscribe and yeah. $13 a month and all that? Okay. Mm-hmm. So this yep. is an older replay, but the newer replays will do this. Any any 4,000 or 5,000 series will do this? Yes. Okay. They'll do all this stuff. So show us what uh, we're in doing. In the past, I, last time when you weren't here, I showed how you can burn stuff to DVD. Your right. stuff recorder and replay. Before, I showed you how you could hook it up to your home network. And that's what this program does. I the remember interface that. is DV Archive. And that's this program right here. And it really basically just turns your computer into a second replay unit. So because we've plugged this replay mm-hmm. into the Ethernet port, right. and it automatically, it just, it automatically just kind of recognized yep, the network, got IP DHCP, address. got the IP address. Yeah. So this thing, this sucker is on the network. It is. We're running this. And does that make it look like it's also a replay? Yes, to the, exactly. To the, okay. So exactly. it's just another replay, except another it's a PC replay. now. Right. Okay. And so what I want show now is if you download movies, if you download movie trailers or music videos well, or any home, video. home videos that you've yeah, shot and edited, yeah. you can convert them to the replay format and watch them anywhere in your house, wherever you have a replay unit. So show us how you do that. So the first step you have to do, the, the, what, the whole goal is to convert it to the, an MPEG that the replay is familiar with. It's kind of a specialized format that it, it is. needs. Mm-hmm. And the program that, that I use is the Tsunami MPEG encoder. Love this program. Great program. Free. And it's free. Great program. That's right. Now, d- does it come with a replay plugin? There are uh, two templates that you have to download, and they're on the on the, on the article we have a on the link website. To that. Yeah, okay. And there is uh, two templates for that. They also have a plugin f- to read QuickTime movies. Uh, so when you go to, let's see. Now you're in Tsunami, and you're actually. I'm Tsunami. So you choose the format, the template format. you want to use, okay. and choose the video you want to use. Okay. Now it can read a whole mess. Of AVI, video files. JPEG, MPEG, That's right. MPEG 1. The plugin will give you Quick the QuickTime time capability. It reads Windows Media or ASF files. Sometimes if, window, if it doesn't read a uh, Windows Media video when you put it in, you just rename it to ASF okay. and it reads it. Oh, really? Just That's fine. the older WMV yep. format. Okay. Exactly. There are yeah. also a program to convert real media files, but it's 20 bucks. But if you have oh, a bunch of real media, wow. you know, the, t- uh, Tsunami doesn't. You have to get a separate program to Got convert it. real media. Okay. But if you have a bunch, it's worth it. What about DivX? If you have uh, DivX, if you try to... Uh, convert it to MPEG, there'll be audio sync problems. And so you use a program called Virtual Dub here. That strips the audio out? It strips the audio out. So I've got an M- or an AVI here, uh, the broken that Kevin does, right. that's con- um, c- and encoded in DivX. And okay. so we open it up and choose File, Save Wave. And so it'll that, rip the wave out. That takes the audio, the audio out. out. Got it. And then what you do is you use Tsunami to re-encode it, to compile everything back together. So you grab the AVI, you grab the wave, you tell it what the audio and the video are. Exactly. And it syncs it. It Puts knows it what to together. do? Oh, yep. okay. All right. And all of these options when you use the replay template are uh, default. Just say yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Next, next, next. And it will start encoding. Now, you notice it takes a while uh, because it's re-encoding video. Okay. So it'll t- you have to sit and wait for it to convert it to the, That's the always MPEG slow. format. Always. Although always it's has not been. too slow. I mean, it's almost no, real this time. This is a smaller, this is an hour or two hour movie, okay. though. It's 20 right. minutes or whatever okay. it happens to be. Now, what you can also do is you can also rip your DVDs to the hard drive. But it's a big process. So what most people do is just plug your DVD player right into your replay, and, and record, just record it as a movie, the DVD. and okay. then move it over there. And then will you the can quality archive. be worse if you do that? You can, there are several uh, re- quality settings. Just I'm sure You're like pretty similar. You, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. But it's good if you if you want your computer to store. How is the quality on have. this? If I if I if I then take these and play this through the, to the TV, is it good. pretty good? It's whatever the best. Whatever the quality is on the computer, it's going to look like that. Maybe a little worse depending on the actual size cool. of the video. Well, let's do it. Let's play. Yeah. It. There's one other step you have to do, and oh, this is this is the fun. The, quote, fun, geeky okay. part, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, is you get to go to a command line and use a program called RT Convert, which is right here, and you have to convert the MPEG into a uh, process, and it gives you this index and this oh. EVT file that replay, or that, uh, it. that DV archive it's needs. In, it's basically indexing it. Yep. So the replay expects those two files to be available exactly. for everything it plays. And then you import it in a DV archive. You, in, you import the MPEG that you... Just converted. The, uh, the real play, exactly. replay version. Okay. And it imports it and puts it in the guide and it'll well, yeah, show up. There it right is, here. just so like it's a show. It now, does it show up on this TV? It does. So we go to the guide. This one's here. connected to the replay box over the network. Over the network. So we go right up here to the top. Notice in the top right hand corner it says this replay. This replay TV. I'm changing it over to the computer. That's the PC. Yep, that's the PC. Those are the movies that are on the You've PC. You've actually down turned below. this PC into a media server. Exactly. And so here is. Uh, one of the movies that I con- that I downloaded and converted earlier. You just play press play and it plays. That's right. Wow, that's very cool. 
Yeah. yeah so I there know. it is. You make me regret buying that TiVo. It Replay was your TV, decision, it's, not mine. it's still around. The, the, the steps are kind of complicated. There's there's some yeah. hoops you have to jump through. So it's I I put a, a hopefully a very clear article okay. uh, on on our website. You want to see complicated? Hack the TiVo sometime. That'll, I don't have that's, to. Yeah, you don't have to. Ha, that's ha, right. ha, ha, ha. For links to download the software, you need step-by-step -step instructions. At Joshua Shed. Yep. Shed. It's all on the website at thescreensavers.com. Now listen up, sports fans. Here's Sarah with some news. That's right. Windows are Pong. Linux are Sco. Forget the. March madness of years past, the screensavers are pleased to announce our first annual Geek 16. It's our NCAA tournament for tech enthusiasts. Go to today's show notes at thescreensavers.com and start filling out your very own bracket. You can even print it out if you want. Read our full scouting reports and experts' picks before you put your money down. The first round starts today and ends on Sunday, so play, see who advances to the latest eight. I'm not kidding. <laughs> really happening. Now stay where you are. We'll give Rick the trick on high-end video cards for his dual monitor gazing. But up next, you want to replace your boring XP boot screen? Yeah, look at that thing. I do too. And I'll show you how when the screensavers continue. studio to see what they've got coming up tonight. That's Tech Live. Hello, hello. Hey, it's Corbin. Hello, it's Corbin Big Red. Hey, Big Red. Signing in. How you doing? I'm All good, right. I'm good. So you guys have heard of open source software, of course, mm -mm. but how about open source yoga? Oh. Hmm. oh so tonight nice. on Tech Live, we're going to tell you a new movement to keep yoga free and yeah. open, I'm just like source code. It's a response to one guru's copyrighted yep. yoga poses. Yeah. Isn't this crazy? So is please. it Bikram? Who is it that's doing it? I think it is Bikram. Bikram. Yep. So my, my request is you please meditate on this until after the screensavers. Mm. Namaste. Yeah. Namaste. It will be a very, very good show. You must watch it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have been living on then. air for 14 years. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica Corbin. You're a so it's coming up on Tech Live right after this show. I do yoga. You want to see? No, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I could get stuck. It's time for the Petite Tipper to give us a tweak. It is time for me. Now, if you're not sure what the XP boot screen is, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's fun. It's cool, but it's not really, right? It says Microsoft on it. It's kind of boring. Today, I'm going to show you how to use a resource hacker to make your boot screen look however you want. Now, before I get into it, I just want to let you know it's a complicated hack here. You're actually, ha you're actually hacking your Windows kernel. So. If you don't want to do that, you don't feel comfortable, don't worry. In my article, I have a free, two actually free downloads that will let you do the same thing, but it does the work for you. Now, I personally find it more fun to learn how things are done, so I'm going to show you how to do it manually yourself. The first thing you have to do is go into your System32 folder and locate a file, a very important file, called ntoskernel.exe. Now this is, like I said, I can't stress enough how important this is. This is how your computer starts. You mess this up, you're not going to be happy. What I want you to do before you do anything is make a backup copy. I've made one right here. So if all else fails, you've got that copy. Now, now you're going to open up your ntoskernel.exe file in something called Resource Hacker. I have the download in my article. Once you open it up, you're going to have bitmap message table version info. We're only concerned with the bitmap portion of it, the graphical portion of it. So, okay, I'm going to expand this. And I just happen to know ahead of time, because I've done this a few times, that number 1, 8, and 10 are the ones that refer to our boot screen. In XP Home, it's 1, 7, and 9, I think. Again, instructions in my oh, article, boy. right? This, you're, getting, you're getting the quick version of this. Now, when I, when I click on the components here, they all look black. That's because Windows is really lame and put the palette for these bitmaps somewhere outside of the kernel. I think it's to make it harder for all of us yeah. to hack it. That's okay because I know where the palette is and I'm going to give that to you too. So what you want to do is you just want to save all of these bitmaps. You want to save them somewhere where you can remember them. And once you save them using Resource Hacker, you can access them later. You can't access them right now because they're all sort of jumbled together, right? So you're kind of extracting them, if you will. All right, so I've, add, I've saved them all to my desktop in my folder called Boot Bitmaps. I've got 1, 8, and 10, okay? Now what I'm going to do is open Paint Shop Pro. I've just used Paint Shop Pro because it has a free 30-day trial version. It's a pretty cool program if you want to use something besides Photoshop. And 
I have a palette download in my article. What you want to do is you want to apply the palette to all these three images, okay? What you have to do is make sure that the image is active. Um, I've opened them all. They look black, as they did in Resource Hacker. And I'm just going to make sure that Maintain Indexes is checked, and I'm just going to load. Oh, yeah, fun, huh? I'm just going to load the images. So it's kind of like Hello, you start XP. feeling really smart, like, hey, yeah. you tried to trick me, and I am not going to be tricked. Yeah. So at this point, you can edit the bitmaps to look however you want them to look. Anything you want to do. Uh, PaintShop Pro is not quite like Photoshop, but you can do pretty much all the same stuff. You can make your images look however you want. What you want to do now is save these images, again, somewhere where it's very easy to find them later. You're going to reopen ntoskernel.exe in Resource Hacker. And what you want to do at this point under the action menu is replace these bitmaps. You want to replace the original bitmaps with your new bitmaps. Okay. At this point, what you want to do is you want to check your new boot screen. You don't want to replace that kernel unless you're sure that you like your new boot screen and you're not going to mess anything up, right? At this point, you're going to make a change to your boot.ini file. And, oh, and yeah, so you're actually adding a string. It's almost as if you're saying you want a, a, you know, a, a dual yeah. you know, operating system, but what you're just doing is saying, okay, I want you to give me a prompt before it boots saying you want your old kernel or your new kernel, right? So what, the only thing to remember here is that you can't do this forever. The reason is is because when Windows does critical updates or any kind of update at all, they want to update the original kernel. It doesn't know anything about your new kernel, right? So at some point, you're going to have to boot into safe mode and actually overwrite that existing file. For now, this is a good way to check it out. I, I made one earlier before the show, and I'll just show you what Let's it looks see. like Let's here. Let's see your boots. Isn't that good? Uh, yeah. Okay. See, I like that way better than what Microsoft You're is doing. You're such an I'm, artist. I'm yeah. such an artist. Yeah. I know it's it's very yeah. it's very Warhol. We encourage yeah. everyone. You know? I really. It looks like you tagged Matisse, it with a spray can. I kind of felt a little bit like Matisse. <laughs> Actually, more yeah. Jean Michel Basquiat. It's I think. Very mod. Very anyway, raw. like I said, full <laughs> instructions, the long version in my Windows Week article at thescreensavers.com. This is a fun exercise. I know it seems like a long way. But I learned a lot I about my good. Windows kernel, man. Yeah. It's great. I and if you great. want the same payoff with a lot less work, free downloads, also my article. Will you post your uh, startup screen? <laughs> Can we download that? If you want that. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah was here. Maybe. Girls I'll think yeah. about it. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Sure. Coming up after the break, Rick's a non-gamer who wants a video card. Actually, he wants dual monitors. How can he do it? Well, tell him after these messages. Stay <laughs> Tomorrow's show, it's a special Encore edition. The author of, uh, this was actually a great interview, uh, uh, Apple Confidential 2.0, Owen Linsmeyer, talks about the history of Apple and how it changed everything forever. It's really a cult, not a company. And we'll show you how to upgrade your notebook's hard drive the easy way. Plus, Sarah shows you how to add your very own picture to your XP user account. It does not involve kernel hacking, fear not. That's all on tomorrow's show. We can only do one of those every once in a while. Yeah. I love that, though. That's fun. It's good stuff. Let's take another call. Rick joins us on the phone from South Miami, Florida. Hey, Rick. Hi, how are you, Patrick and Leo? We're great. Good Welcome to the show. What can we do for you? I've been enjoying your show for years back when it was you and Kate, Leo. Wow. Huh? Long time I, I, I vaguely remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, when you, whenever people ask you about video cards, they're asking for the newest high-end cards right. for gamers. Yeah. Right. I'm not a gamer. Okay. Uh, and I want to know what I should be looking for because I have a feeling I don't need to be spending all the money that the gamers are spending for the high-end cards. You are I, correct, sir. I mm -hmm. do use um, dual monitors, mm. and um, uh, and I spend a lot of time on the internet and a lot of time with office applications. You know, but actually, the internet is somewhat graphically challenging. Those right. pictures and, and scrolling up and down is, is. But on a on a scale like it's not like a video game. About five, people stopped running to basically stopped running two D graphics benchmarks on graphics accelerators because they can they can throw everything up on the screen much right. faster than you will ever be able to process right. it right, right. because right. It, it's just so fast the 3d performance right is is what you're running into Rick. because people are like oh it's the video game it's the 16 by 100 by 1200 the nice thing is is you don't really care about a little bit of 3d performance is nice in case you run into an application that has some 3d rendering but almost anything on one hand almost anything will do what you want to do except for the dual monitor output 
He could put two cards in. Yeah, but you know what? It's 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 so much easier to have a dual head card of some sort where both of them plug out of that. Than One it is card, to, two connectors. Yeah, which actually NVIDIA makes cards that do those. ATI makes cards that do that. Matrox, Matrox is yeah. a great company. They, they basically, they've fallen behind in the 3D race, but they still make really great drivers, really solid cards. They pride themselves on, on the quality of the video and the color. Um, AP, Appian is another yeah. dual head card. No, I Appian's don't have any a lot more with expensive. Appian. That's kind of high. Appian end. basically, Appian is a company that's primarily, and I know I'm going to get an email because somebody from Appian's probably watching, but they primarily sell to if you're Designers. a Wall Street company that oh. has you know 400 guys in a big room and right. all of them have to have five computer monitors right. in front of them. That's right. a classic Appian application where they'd have you know multiple outputs on those. If I had to pick one, I'd say Matrox. Although you probably get great prices on the yeah. Nvidia because they're just cranking them out. If you shop around, basically the, you know the 9200, the 9000, the 8500, the 9600, because you're not really worried about 3D gaming performance, you can focus, you know, look for something with the, the right DVI output or, or a VGA output, you'll be golden. You think 100 bucks, 150 Probably. Somewhere around there? You know, if you want to start spending big money on the latest Matrox, you might be able to get all the way up there around $200. Woo! Yeah. Hey, thanks for the call, Rick. Good question. Stay where you are, folks. Coming up next, we'll check our inbox. And final word, Screen Savers continue. Stay there. Come see the show in person. If you're going to be in the San Francisco Bay Area and you'd like to join the Screensavers live on the set, go to www.techtv.com slash ticket line for information and to request tickets. Go there so we can see you here. Sarah, do you have any emails? I do. The first email is from Rick. He says, I'm just curious. I read that Comcast is going to buy Tech TV. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Uh, the sale happened, or within the agreement happened yesterday, and then we're waiting. It right. takes a couple of months, maybe a month, uh, for regulatory approval. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we'll be merged with G4, which is their gaming channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much all that's we all know. That's all we know. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, they've already indicated uh, that, that this show, for certain, will be sticking around. <laughs> so, it, it's probably very good. Comcast, as you probably know, is the number one cable company in the, uh, in the country. Mm -hmm. So, it will add probably a number of homes. And if you watch us on Comcast, or if you're one of those people like in Toms River, New Jersey, where Comcast took us off, you may get us back. So, we think it's pretty good. I think it's going to add uh, more viewers, and it's certainly going to add a, an owner that really likes what we do and likes enough to pay a lot of money for what we do, so we think it's good news. We're still going to be here every day. Not doing me, what but we do. you guys will. Keep tuning in. Life doesn't change here. <laughs> I just snuck that one in. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, you might be here, but... <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, go on, on. Uh, Bob says, I just got low-speed DSL for my phone company. I'm wondering if my connection's fast enough to play first-person shooters, what's the slowest connection yeah. I can use? DSL, cable modem. Yeah, but I mean, he said slow speed. Yeah. If he's getting 128K, that's probably yeah. fast enough. It's actually the 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 bandwidth is less important for most than first latency. person shooters than the yeah. actual latency. The yeah. latency should be fairly low. You should have a good old. Some time. games are bandwidth challenged, like Battlefield. I think you need a lot of bandwidth. Battlefield, you need a big you need a big pipe for Battlefield. Which means probably 128K. I mean, you need, you need broadband. Is they recommend broadband? Yeah. and I think that's probably true for Battlefield Vietnam because sure it's, it's the, the same. same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a big game, and when you get so many people in there, and it could bog. It it's can. famous for that, actually. Yeah. Hey, you got to tune in next week, Robot Week. We're gonna have a all lot robots. of fun. All robots, all the time. Now, uh, there is one other change that's gonna happen. This is my last uh, night as a host of the Screen Savers. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd let you guys kind of. You know, I've been interrupting you an awful lot. I think it's time you got to speak up. I'm going to come by every day, of course, and do segments for the show. And I will continue on Call for Help every Monday through Friday. And what's good is they're going to move Call for Help right next to this show. It's going to be on at right. 6 p.m. Eastern, right before the screensaver is 7 p.m. Eastern. So I'm not going to say goodbye because I'm not really going anywhere. I'm going to be right next door, and I'll be on this show every single night. Thank you. It's been a wonderful six years doing the screensavers. I have loved every minute of it. I'm not leaving, guys. <laughs> no, give me a hug. I don't want to leave that. Yeah. See you later. Bye-bye. Man, that's a real shame when folks be throwing away a perfectly good white boy like that. <laughs>